Dynamic Equalization is awesome. If you've never heard of Dynamic Equalization, you are in for a treat. The two audio signal processes that engineers use the most, equalization and compression, are combined into one tool. That's right. Equalization, as we all know, is a static operation unless you automate your EQs during a mix. And, as we all know, automation is a tedious exercise, and if we can avoid it, we will, because time is money. And the less time we spend automating, the more time we have to drive our Lamborghinis, right? Compression, on the other hand, helps us even out volume fluctuations in an audio signal. And it does this to all the frequencies of a signal. Dynamic EQ allows us to reduce or boost frequencies only when they go past a certain threshold level that we define. As simple of a concept this is, it opens up a lot more possibilities and when used right, will allow you to create a much higher quality mix than you could before. If you've ever used a de the concept is similar, but de are used for reduction only and usually have a limit frequency range that is tailored for the harsh frequencies and you don't have control over the reduction curve, the cue points, things like that, that you would have with a typical equalizer. Now, where would you apply dynamic EQ? On a recent mix, the singer had a rather deep voice. I ended up reducing the low mids right around the 200 to 600 or 700 hertz range but when you do that, it thins out his vocal. So I had to compromise between the two. I couldn't reduce it as much as I like to. And of course, that ended up interfering with any time the bass guitar or the kick came in. If he had his deep lyrics going on, it would clash with that. I would have loved to have EQ'd it as much as I would like during those specific notes. And now I can. I mean, this was a real problem, a, a very real problem. I mean, it's basically the opposite of, of harshness in a vocal, where only certain words have harshness in them, and not all the words the singer has is going to have low-end notes. So during those notes, the dynamic EQ would kick in, and when there was no boxiness, no muddiness, it would go away. Very, very cool. Here's another example. Have you ever wanted to make a mix brighter or have more presence, but then when the hi-hats or cymbals or, again, a vocal line comes in and makes it too harsh, you can't do that, right? Well, Dynamic EQ will allow you to have boost, and then when something gets too harsh for your taste, it won't boost. Now, Dynamic EQ has been around, uh, I believe... For at least two years, I might be wrong about that, but it's a relatively recent tool that a lot of people are talking about. And uh, a part of that has to do with a new plugin called TDR Nova. Now, like I said, there's been other plugins that have come out, but none that are number one, free, number two, affordable for the better edition, uh, the premium version of this plugin. Now, this is the free version, but the free version is still a very powerful processor. Uh, not only can you do just equalization or just compression, but again, we have the dynamic EQ capability. You can also EQ and then compress or compress and then EQ all within the same plugin. Um, very, very well laid out plugin and has so many features. Uh, by the way, don't be fooled up here where it says precise. If you're, uh, if you got a, um, a slower computer, an older computer, you can go to eco mode. Eco mode is equivalent to the high quality modes on other plugins from what I've read from the developers. Precise is even more awesome. And you, and you can see how I, uh, when I do that, it, it changes how far this orange line extends um, when I go into eco mode it go it's uh, less but I mean that's you know up to really Nyquist the uh, the maximum hearing range of human beings so eco mode is just fine if you need it for lower CPU but if you have a newer CPU you're only using this plug-in on a few tracks or one or two tracks then definitely use precise mode 
Um, you know, if you want, if you need to freeze tracks, you know, if you, but this is a very nice sounding equalizer and it, it, it kicks ass. It absolutely kicks ass. Like I said, you are going to have so many more options now when you're mixing, your mixes will sound better. And for those of you who want to have louder mixes, I know that's, even though I'm not a fan of it, if you want to have a louder mix, this will help you achieve a louder mix because as we all know if we have certain frequencies going above the other ones then that's going to muck up things right it's going to muck up the mix it's going to muck up the master you can reduce this just for those frequencies so the perceived loudness of your mix will sound louder and more importantly though certain notes of for bass guitar let's say let's you know let's say you want to have a bass guitar that's louder or clearer, but the problem is some of those notes are excessively low end. Well, we can reduce it just when those notes pop in. How powerful is that? That That's amazing. Seriously, that's why I said dynamic EQ is awesome. It really, really is awesome. And you got to check out this plugin. You got to mess with it. The manual that it comes with is pretty well written, but really messing with this thing, just like with any tool is the way to, to learn it. And I would highly recommend it. Uh, $50 for the premium version. The free version is awesome already, but the, the premium version adds more features that you'll probably want to have. And uh, definitely, this is on my to-buy list for the Gentleman's Edition, which is the premium version. Check it out, guys. I believe this works with VST, 32-bit, and 64-bit, along with AAX. And I think it's, I think it also has uh, Mac audio units and possibly Mac VST. I'm not sure, but I'll link to the website for sure. Check it out regardless. It is a freaking awesome plug-in. That's all I got to say about that. I've already said it enough. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com.